All right, so let's just go over the basics of this um, proportion hypothesis testing, and then we'll bring the series of videos of hypothesis testing into an end. Um, in my next video, I'm going to pick some few questions on um, hypothesis testing, and then we solve as additional information to what we already have. Now, let's look at this question again. In this question, of course, in the former video, I showed you how to state the hypothesis, all right? Now, remember that we are testing for a, pro, um, a sample proportion of 0 0.14, okay? We are testing the hypothesis for a sample proportion of 0 0.14. Now, remember that the Z value of a proportion is sample proportion minus population proportion all over the standard error, which is square root of P into back at one minus P all over N. All right, so the sample proportion is 0 0.14. The population proportion as given in the question is 0 0.10. All right, so the population proportion as given in the question is 0 0.10. All right, that is the population proportion given in the question here, which is 0 0.10. All right. Now, so square root of 0. 1, 0 into bracket 1 minus 0 0.10 all over 100. So you get 0 0.14 minus 0 0.10 all over 0 0.03. All right. So if you compute the Z value, you are going to get um, 0 0.4 over 0 0.03. And the answer is. Zero point one four minus zero point. So that here is zero point zero four. Sorry, so zero point zero four divided by zero point zero three. It is one point three 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 reoccurring. So this is the computer z value. All right. Now, assuming we are testing this hypothesis, of course it is one tilde. Okay. From the previous video, you know that this is it is one tilde. Okay. From the previous video, we know it is one tail. All right, because we are testing the null hypothesis that the population proportion is less than 0 0.10. Okay, we are testing the hypothesis that the population proportion is less than 0 0.10. All right. So 0 0.10, we are testing whether it's less than, but as I say, we allow for a little more than but up to a certain point, okay? All right, so this is the hypothesis we are testing. So if we are testing at 95% confidence, it goes with 5% alpha. And if it is one tilde, it goes with a Z value of 1.645, if it is one tilde. It goes with a Z value of 1.645. So the 1.645 is here. So once the critical Z value is 1.645 and the computer Z value is 1.333, okay, we accept because it is in the acceptance region. All right, so here the computed Z is equal to 1.333, which is less than the Z critical of 1.645. So it means that 1.333 will lie within the acceptance range, as we can see. So we accept the null hypothesis. Or you can put it, we fail to reject, all right? 
So hypothesis testing is one of the simplest thing you can do, especially when you are using the, the Z value approach. It's so simple, right? Just compute the Z value yourself and you compare it to the critical Z value. Once it is less than or greater than you know your conclusion based on your diagram that you have, you have drawn, okay? All right. Now, if you the third approach is when we use the actual proportion values to determine the third approach. So we are saying that the proportion is 0 0.1, okay? And we are testing it at 95% confidence or 5% level or 1.645 Z value. So 95% confidence. 5% um, alpha or 1.645 Z value for one tail. Okay, that is why we must learn how to, I mean, read the tables for one tail. I mean, in these instances, you may know for two tail, the standard two tailed ones, where we say 95% is one point. Um, 1.96, 90% is um, 1.645, and 99% is 2.575. That is for two tail, but we also need to know one tail, or we have to also read the table, all right? So in my tutorial video, I'll give a summary of all these um, Z values, okay? Now, if I want to com compute the confidence for this, it will be the confidence for the upper limit only. Okay, so it will be the proportion plus or minus the Z for only the upper limit into bracket, the standard error which is P into bracket one minus P all over P. Of course, square root of this, okay? So it will be sorry, it will be the population proportion of zero point one zero plus or minus, the Z is 1.645. And then remember when you computed the standard error, we had 0 0.03. All right, remember that when you computed the standard error, we had 0 0.03. The whole of this standard error is 0 0.03. So it is one tilt to the upper. So it's not plus or minus, it's this plus, okay? Plus. So when you compute this, you are going to get zero point one four nine. Okay, you are going to get zero point one four nine. We are going to get zero point one four nine. Zero point one four nine. That is the um, answer we are going to get. So it means that we can allow a maximum proportion up until 0 0.149, which corresponds with a Z of 1.645, of course. But the actual mean value is 0 0.149, okay? Now, if the pro sample proportion in the question as given is 0 0.14, it would, so all here is the acceptance region. What it means is that it will lie in the acceptance region. So then, oh, I should have used proportion, not mean, sorry. So this is proportion. So the proportion of 0 0.14 will lie within the acceptance region. So that means that proportion of 0 0.14 is less than the maximum allowable proportion of 0 0.149. So we accept it, all right? So if you want to use the Z value, it means I have to convert all this proportion value to Z value, like what we did here, all right? So a proportion, so a Z value of 1.645 moves with a proportion of 0 0.149, all right? Proportion of 0 0.149. So once you're computed T and um, Z, sorry, Z, it's 1.333, it's less than the critical Z of 1.645, we accept. Or you can compute 
your proportion, the sample proportion I'm giving in the question, which is 0 0.14, and it is less than the maximum allowable proportion of 0 0.14 like so it's also within the acceptance rate. So in simple terms, we can test hypothesis using three things, as mentioned earlier. Number one is compute the Z and, compare it, uh, and, and, and then compare it to the critical Z, which we know extensively. Number two, compute using p-value, as I've shown um, when I was teaching um, population hypothesis testing for population mean. And now the third approach is to compute the sample mean or proportion, okay? And compare it to the critical value of what the proportion or the mean. And that is what we have just done. So the sample proportion was 0 0.14 and it is within or it is less than the critical proportion of 0 0.149. So these are the three approaches that we use in testing hypothesis, all right? So um, you look for my tutorial videos on hypothesis testing and confidence interval, which I believe will give more understanding to the things um, we have done, okay? All right, so the final thing we are going to talk about in hypothesis testing is the errors. Now, I mentioned earlier that type two error occurs when we fail to reject a false null hypothesis, all right, or when we accept a false null hypothesis. Now, the probability of rejecting a true null hypothesis is the alpha. That is why we call it the significance level. So if your alpha is 0 0.05, the beta is 0 0.95, Okay, it's the opposite side, all right? So we can calculate beta. What it means is that you calculate beta, you know your alpha. Once you know your alpha, you subtract the alpha from one because alpha plus beta must give you a, a maximum probability of one. So if your alpha is 0 0.05, your beta will be 0 0.95. If your alpha is 0 0.1, your beta will be 0 0.9. All right, so the steps are simple. You just know how to calculate your, or compute your alpha, all right? Or your p-value, that's, the alpha is the same as, the observed alpha is the same as the computed p-value, all right? So once you're able to do your p-value, you must know how to calculate the beta, all right? So for this question, we go through the steps. In this question, so if you look at this question, the mean is 700, all right? The mean is 700. And then if we test the hypothesis and we compute the p-value, okay, p as in port or pan, the p-value, once we are able to get our p-value, to be, so the Z was 0 0.98, one tilde, right? The Z was 0 0.98, one tilde, okay? Sorry, um, I think the Z is, yes. So once we're able to read the P value of this Z value, we will get 0 0.3365. And I've shown you extensively how to compute or how to get a P value. So actually the observed P value is the alpha, all right? So once you're able to get your p-value by reading the z-table, you get your alpha. And once you get your alpha, the opposite side, so if the, um, all right, so um, we will have to read the Z value of 0 0.98 from the table, all right, one till. So once you read it, you should get something like uh, 0. Point. So let, let's just read it. 
um, 0 0.98. You are going to read 0 0.98. So 0 0.98 is here. So 0 0.9 and 0 0.08. So here. All right, here. Here. So it means that the whole proportion here, the whole aspect of here is the 0 0.8365, right? And that is what we've seen. That is what we have seen here. So it means that this whole proportion is the beta, which is 0 0.8365, okay? Then the rejection region is the alpha, all right? The rejection region is the alpha. All right, so these things are pretty simple. Once you're able to get your p-value, the p-value, the observed p-value is always the alpha. That's the observed alpha. And once you subtract that figure from one, you get the observed beta, all right? So I think these calculations are um, pretty simple, okay? And we can do the same thing for proportions. We can calculate the observed p-value for proportion, okay? Because once we can compute z-value for a proportion, this is the z-value. We can read from the table and know the observed p-value. And once you know the observed p-value, we subtract the answer from one, you get the observed beta. All right, so these calculations are pretty simple. And then um, that is that for this section, all right? So um, just um, look for the tutorial videos on hypothesis testing for mean, for proportions, as well as um, the confidence interval for mean and proportion, all right? Okay, so we'll meet. The next sections, apart from tutorial, the next sections will be on um, contingency analysis, correlation analysis, um, chi-square analysis, and then regression analysis, all right? So more especially, um, we'll focus on the regression analysis in our next sections. All right, um, thank you and meet you in the next section.